Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your man Soul here. Welcome back to the channel. You know what it is when you clicked it. Today we're doing a different style of a video. We're doing a tank comparison between the Blood Death Knight and the Protection Warrior. Uh, before we get into the video, I do want to thank all of the new subscribers, new commenters, new viewers for checking out the channel. And if you are new to the channel and you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps it out a lot as we make it down this long road to 1K. Also this week I have the Amazon $10 gift card giveaway going. Um, nothing big, just to show a little bit of my appreciation back to the community who has been showing me support. So if you wanna enter, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and comment on one of my videos that you see up this week and you're in and that's really it. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. So first things first, I do wanna say that this by no means is a video that, of me telling you what tank to recruit for your raid group. Like, obviously I don't know every single uh, guild's raid composition out there, so it would be kinda hard for me to say, hey, you should pick this one or you should pick that one, right? I can't really tell you that. Um, even if I was like recommending the vaunted prop paladin, which is known as like the best uh, utility, the best defensive tank, the best whatever have you, the best tank of Wrath of the Lich King, it would be kind of hard for me to say what to recommend for you for your specific raid group. So please don't take this video as that. What you can do is just look at it as kind of like putting both specs under the microscope, right? Seeing what they bring, what they don't bring, where they're strong at, where they're weak at, comparing the two, and then ultimately for the community to decide for themselves what they want to pick. So with that being said, let's get into the comparisons. All right, let's talk about my favorite class, the Death Knight, more specifically the Blood DK and their strengths. First things first, they have very high, probably the highest single target threat generation via Icy Touch and Frost Presence. Uh, it's just no other tank just has that interaction with their defensive aura, right? Protection Warriors don't deal more threat with Shield Slam while in defensive stance. Uh, bears don't deal more threat with Mango while in bear form. It's just Blood DKs just have this, this innate interaction with icy touch and their defensive aura and it shows and it's really strong the next strength is their multitude of cooldowns and very strong defensive talents whether it be anti-magic shell rune tap will of the necropolis vampiric blood uh, spell deflection they just have a large repertoire of cooldowns and defensive abilities for a multitude of situations and that is very very impactful on their tanking profile that means they can cover a large variety of damage gaps and really help their healers out they also bring a unique buff via Hysteria, which is a single target buff, so much like Tricks of the Trade or Focus Magic, that they can put on one person and increase their physical damage done by 20% for 30 seconds on a three minute cooldown. Now, this is really incredible, and I know I've said in my other videos that this should probably go to the Feral Druid because the Feral Druid is the only one that can stack all of their major cooldowns plus trinkets with Hysteria, but realistically just having a stereo and being able to put it on a physical damage dealer will work so it'll increase your rage dps so it's really really good um they also do well in aoe threat as well i mean i don't want to harp on the threat i i outline single target threat because like i said no other tank has just the interaction with their defensive aura and their main spender um death knights do well in aoe threat but I mean, in, in phase one, almost all tanks can do well in AoE threat. Death Knights are just strong at it, just like Paladins. Um, they also boast a high amount of self-sustained, uh, probably the highest for the tank. They are able to heal themselves for a fair amount over the course of a fight, easing the burden on healers and also shoring up some of the damage that they take. You know, Death Strike and Rune Tap are really, really powerful tools to help heal yourself and keep yourself um, on edge when you're tanking. So really, really good. I think the last strength on the list is the Death Knight's ability just to tank magic damage. They have really good tools for magic damage tanking, such as anti-magic shell, the talent spell deflection, um, being able to just soak magic damage and heal it back through their self-sustain, like with Death Strike and Rune Tap, and they have the talent Will of the Necropolis, which just works on both physical and magic, but it's really strong for um, unsuspected magic damage, and Death Knights can just eat it all up. Um, probably better than all the other tanks may be safe for a paladin but paladins are kind of unfair because they take like 15 percent reduced damage passively just by use of their talents and one of their abilities but for magic damage specifically a death knight is just really really strong all right now it ain't all milk and honey for the blood dk so let's talk about some weaknesses the first being that they're fairly gear dependent and can be squishy early on for like tanking dungeons or tanking raids right um that's just really because one they they tend to have lower amounts of armor early on because they don't use shields like warriors or paladins and they don't have a crazy armor modifier or health modifier like bears do frost presence does give some armor and increase the stamina but not like a bear form 
um the next is that their rune and runic power resource can be clunky to use and can cause gaps in your rotation which would mean lower sustain for your healing right um especially for newer tanks and newer dks like if you just come off of let's say a druid or a paladin and you jump on a death knight and you like haven't played a death knight or haven't done any like research just like minor research into it it can be some growing pains the learning curve can be a little bit steep because no other tank has two resources that they have to manage so it can be a little bit clunky and it can definitely feel that way uh, pulling pack to pack in a raid um, next their utility while powerful isn't really unique so abominations might horn of the winter those things can be covered elsewhere and possibly even better areas than what the death knight can bring as an example the horn of winter strength and agility buff can be buffed by enhanced shaman and in fact if they're taking enhancing totems will override the horn of winter buff so there you have it. you don't even need to press it like for buff purposes that is so outside of hysteria their utility really isn't that unique even their debuffs such as the frost fever debuff coming from icy touch damn near every tank has a 20 percent attack speed slow right so that really isn't unique and i think the final weakness for the blood dk is that their tank damage output is pretty low now i'm not talking if you like specifically are trying to do the most damage as a blood dk like meaning if you're taking the blood gorge talent or you're taking dancing room weapon or you're putting in some like maybe swapping out a uh, tank trinket for a dps trinket that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about standard tanking so if you have all of your tank uh, pre-raid bis or all of your tank phase one bis and you're dealing damage your damage output is probably going to be lower than the other three tanks so i think honestly blood dk probably is the lowest tank or the tank with the lowest amount of damage output for standard tanking all right now for the ironclad protection warriors and their strengths starting with their astounding mob control whether it be stuns via shockwave and concussive blow, the taunt refreshes from vigilance, silences from shield bash, gag order, and heroic throw, and their disarm effect, warriors can control both large groups of mobs and single target mobs effectively well. Next, warriors do bring some pretty solid buffs, namely commanding shout and shattering throw. Commanding shout is a health increase, so not to be confused with prayer of fortitude or blessing of kings because those are stamina increases but commanding shout is a flat health increase so it will increase the party or raid members health by 2255 i do want to note that the warlock imp pets blood pact buff does the same thing but it doesn't increase your health by uh the same amount so the imp pet is just 1750 whereas commanding shout is 2255 so it's a bigger buff on the commanding shout and for Shattering Throw, it's a 20% armor reduction on the target that also stacks with other armor effects for the duration. So it stacks with Thunder Armor, Fairy Fire, Curse of Recklessness, whatever armor debuff you have, Shattering Throw is going to stack with it, making it a very, very strong pseudo raid cooldown for all of your physical DPS. Incredibly powerful. Next, Warriors have really good snap threat. This allows them to get in and get mobs stuck to them, allowing DPS to just go off the walls with their burst damage without caution for a pulling off threat. Like, Warriors are really, really good at just assaulting mobs and making sure that the mobs stay with them instantaneously. Next, and probably the most famous thing about Warriors is their high mobility. Whether it's charge, intervene, or intercept, all of which that can be used in combat thanks to the Warbringer talent, Warriors can really just navigate the battlefield and get to and from mobs unlike any other tank can. Like They really can control the flow of the battle just by being able to get to and from point A to point B. Alright, now let's talk about the protection warrior weaknesses. Starting with probably the most evident one, their vulnerability to magic damage. Warriors just don't have the toolkit to deal with high consistent magic damage that comes from things such as dragon breaths or just boss abilities, right? And that really hurts them because they really rely on shield wall and last stand to cover most of the damage gaps that's not physical because they have shield block for that they really hurt when it comes to magic damage or true damage if they can't use those two abilities because those are longer cooldowns so i think their vulnerability to magic damage really makes them uh susceptible to just spike damage or just death really um, next which kind of goes hand in hand with the vulnerability to magic damage is that they don't have a lot of cooldown versatility like i said we mentioned last stand we mentioned shield wall to a much lesser extent you can throw in rage regeneration in there but that's really it um shield block can take care of the physical mitigation but if it's 
a hard enough hit shield block won't really do it you have to rely on shield wall or last stand and once you rely on one of your two major cooldowns you really don't have anything and i think that combined with the magic damage vulnerability really kind of hurts them in their damage taking profile now you can bring up spell reflection but spell reflection is very niche and it only works on projectiles that's aimed at the warrior like it doesn't really work for just flat magic damage you can't reflect uh breaths you can't reflect just aoe pulsing damage so spell reflection isn't really reliable for a consistent magic damage taken because of the way it works so i think between vulnerability to magic and the lack of cooldown versatility or diversity we'll say really leaves a uh, prop warrior stuck in the wind and then the last weakness i'll mention is their overall utility is quite lacking now because we're comparing blood decay to prop warrior i'll make this comparison really quick even though this is the warrior section to get hysteria you have to bring a blood decay because hysteria is too deep in the blood tree for you not to frost decays and unholy decays cannot bring hysteria but arms and fury can bring all of the utility that the protection warrior brings save for vigilance which is minor as well shattering throw is the strongest utility in my opinion that a warrior overall can bring and because these things can be brought by the dps warriors you really don't have a need to bring a protection warrior now let's talk about vigilance and let's talk about commanding shout so commanding shout is pretty strong but ultimately i don't think it's that impactful to where it moves the needle between a boss kill or not getting a boss kill right yes it's 2255 health for everybody but if you didn't have that would you really be wiping like if 2k is the differentiator between you wiping or i should say you killing a boss you not killing a boss then something else needs to change within your raid group right shattering throw is really strong i don't really have too much bad things to say about shattering throw because it effectively boosts half maybe even more of you depending on your raid comp but we'll, we'll just say half of your dps raid damage which is crazy because it stacks and it's a physical debuff so i don't have too much bad things to say about shattering throw but that's really it that's really like the saving grace kind of like how hysteria is like the saving throw for blood shattering throw is really the saving throw for for prod really because like i said all of the utility can be brought by the other specs so besides shattering throw the utility is really 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 lacking okay comparison time so now we're going to compare the blood dk strengths to the prop warrior strengths and i kind of have like one-to-one -one values not one-to-one -one, but i have a list of things for the warrior a list of things for the death knight so let's start so when it comes to threat both are pretty good i think the warrior snap threat both in single target and aoe kind of cancels out the the death knight's enormous single target threat through the icy touch amp and their good sustained aoe threat right i think those two things are good both things are good in both areas so we can move on from that now when it comes to the mobility of the warrior the only thing you can compare it really with is the ability for the death knight to bring mobs to them via death grip and icy reach improved icy touch right so icy reach is a talent that increases the range of icy touch obviously if you can hit icy touch from a further distance plus it has the threat amp a mob will come to you from you know far away now I was thinking about it and I was saying these two things can cancel each other out, but I will give the slight edge to the warrior strictly because of intervene because intervene not only can get the warrior out of dodge and help them dodge mechanics, but it's also going to help save a life because the intervene target is now not going to take damage from the next couple of hits or something, right? So the death grip can't do that. You can't death grip a person out of a uh, bad, right? You can't death grip or reverse death grip yourself to a person, but warriors can charge a mob and get back to a friendly ally like death knights just don't have that ability so i give the slight edge to the warrior but i will say this death grip and an extended range of icy touch is probably more useful more often than not than intervene but because intervene can be used as a dodge tool and a lifesaver i give the slight edge the slightest edge to warrior next we have the warrior's incredible ability to mob control which really to me just boils down to damage reduction because if you're disarming a target it's doing less damage if you stun a target it's doing no damage to you right if you silence the target is chances are it's going to have to auto attack which is going to do a lot less damage than whatever it was going to cast so that really mob control to me just really boils down to damage reduction so when you compare damage reduction from the warrior or mob control whatever have you to the death knight i think i compared that to the death knight's ability for self-sustain and its cooldown usage because the death knight doesn't have the same control as a warrior but what it does have that the warrior is lacking is multiple multiple cooldowns to mitigate whatever damage is coming out 
sure i can't silence something but i can use ams and i won't take damage plus i'll get a resource for it you know what i mean sure i can't stun things as much as you can but i can heal myself from the damage that i am taking so it doesn't really matter right sure i might not have <clears throat> Icebound Fortitude up, but I got Vampiric Blood up, which is on a one minute cooldown, which means I can use it much more often than both of your cooldowns. So you see what I'm saying? Like, but when I have mob control versus the multiple cooldowns, I give the slight edge to the Death Knight because the Death Knight can make more use of their cooldowns than the Warrior. And to be quite frank, not many bosses can be mob controlled. Not many bosses can be stunned or disarmed or silenced or whatever have you, right? But the Death Knight can always use their cooldowns in a sticky situation. So I think the winner there is the, the Death Knight. And then for the last comparison, I think we compared the biggest utilities that both classes bring, Hysteria versus Shattering Throw. Now, I thought about this. I asked some people, you know, what they thought about Shattering Throw versus Hysteria. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's even like close. I think Shattering Throw is just a better raid cooldown because it's, it's, you're buffing all of your physical DPS versus buffing one physical DPS. That's the comparison. Now, Shattering Throw's power gets diminished if you don't have a lot of physical DPS, right? Like, for the Death Knight, chances are you're going to have one person to put Hysteria on in your raid group. But Shattering Throw, the power wanes if you don't have a lot of physical damage or people who can make use of the armor debuff. Like, if, you're, if your group is caster heavy or even not even just caster heavy just heavy with melee that just do primarily magic damage it's not going to hit the same as a hysteria in some cases so but generally speaking i give the nod to shattering throw but like i said in the prop warrior weakness because shattering throw can be brought by some by another warrior spec I don't give that much points to the warrior because you don't need the warrior to get shattering throw you need the blood death knight to get hysteria you don't need the prop warrior to get shattering throw so it might be a little bit of a stalemate here i'm thinking i'm giving the edge to shat throw just because if you look at the two abilities on paper shattering throw is going to give more of a raid buff than her hysteria will but because of the nuances of shattering throw being able to be brought by someone else not needing a prop warrior for it and Dependent on your raid comp, Hysteria could overtake the win. So this might be a stalemate. Some people might see it as Shattering Throw is just better. Some people might see it as Hysteria is still just better. But I think it's closer to a stalemate, but I'm leaning more towards Shattering Throw being the better uh, strength. Now for a comparison of the weaknesses. And I gotta say, I think I'm just giving the overall edge to the Death Knight for maybe not having fewer weaknesses, but having less impactful or more fixable weaknesses. So for example, being gear to being squishy early on i should say is fixed by just getting gear like being gear dependent is a weakness but it can be quite easily fixed the resource clunkiness can also be circumvented by just practice and even though though death knight's utility isn't unique and can be covered elsewhere so can the warriors so that's that's those two weaknesses they share and as far as tank damage output i think those things only really matter in speedrunning guilds right because the warrior does really good uh, tank damage output so they're probably the the better tank for the speedrunning but if you're not in a speedrunning guild then it doesn't really matter what kind of damage the tank is doing but i think the vulnerability to magic and the lack of cooldown diversity just really really hurt the warrior because those are things you can't fix you can't add cooldowns to a warrior sure you could add trinkets but i can't name a trinket that's on the same power level as shield wall you know what i'm saying so i think just those two weaknesses alone can really really hurt the warrior and just make them more susceptible to dying like a death knight evidently can rotate anti-magic shell and vamp blood for every dragon breath that they take a warrior can't do that with last stand and shield wall and chances are they're saving shield wall for something something really really big so or an emergency button so i think the two weaknesses that the warrior has being the vulnerability to magic and the lack of cooldown diversity really just hurt the warrior to, to be on you know disrepair right so i think i give the nod to the death knight when it comes to having more fixable weaknesses so in conclusion i think i give the slight edge winner to the death knight i think the warrior's weaknesses are just too compounding compared to the death knight's weaknesses that the warrior can really hurt you in the wrong progression fight whereas the death knight won't now that's not me saying that you know 
don't bring a prop warrior prop warriors are bad whatever have you i think the meme of prop warrior has really died down i don't think there's a problem bring, bringing a prop warrior but i do think you should know what you're getting yourself into on some of the fights just know that they're susceptible to magic damage and it's gonna hurt a lot whereas the death knight is gonna hurt early on but as you get more gear you're gonna notice it less and less plus they can heal themselves so that being said i really had fun making this video i hope you guys enjoyed it um if you think i'm crazy and you think that the prop warrior is a way superior tank to the blood dk let me know in the comments below if you think i hit the nail on the head for both classes let me know in the comments below if you think i'm great let me know in the comments hey just comment that's all i want i just want you guys to comment comment like the video if you liked it and if you are new to the video and you liked it please consider subscribing as i said before it helps the channel a lot also let me know if you want to see more uh, class comparisons I, I don't mind doing them um this was fun had a good time kind of just you know looking at things side by side and saying hmm what would i pick so hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well and that being said you guys have been great i've been sold and i'm out peace